Planta fasciitis. What is planta fasciitis? Planta fasciitis is a painful foot condition caused by inflammation of insertion of the planta fascia on the middle process of the calcaneal tuberosity. The planta fascia is a thickened fibrous sheet of connective tissue that originates from the middle tubercle of the calcaneus and connects the heel to all five of the toes. Planta fascia provides support for the longitudinal arch and serves as a dynamic shock absorber. But in planta fasciitis, the planta fascia is in the shape of a bowstring and is supporting the arch of the foot and absorbing shock when walking. If tension and stress on this bowstring become too great, small tears can occur in the fascia. Other terms have been used to describe planta fasciitis including jogger's heel, tennis heel, policeman's heel, gonorrheal heel, planta fasciosis. Although a misnomer, this condition is sometimes referred to as heel spurs by the general public. Planta fasciitis is one of the most frequent causes of heel pain. It accounts for 15% of all adult foot complaints requiring professional care and is prevalent in both non-athletic and athletic people. It was estimated around 1 in 10 people will get plantar fasciitis in their life. The average plantar heel pain episode lasts longer than 6 months and affects up to 10-15% to of the population. The prevalence of plantar fasciitis was lowest in those aged 18-44 to and highest in those aged 45-64. to Females are more likely to report for plantar fasciitis than males. Those who have BMI of 30 or more are 5 times more likely to have plantar fasciitis than those BMI less than 25. So what is the causes of plantar fascia? Repeated stretching and tearing or strain injury to the ligament of the sole of the foot can irritate or inflame the fascia, although the cause remains unclear in many cases of plantar fasciitis. Strain or tears of the fascia mostly can happen if you are wearing high heels, being runner or dancer, sitting all the time, and spending a lot of time on your feet on hard surfaces. Being overweight or having rheumatoid arthritis can also cause plantar fasciitis or make it worse. Plantar fasciitis causes pain in your heel. It's usually worse when you take your first steps in the morning or after you have been sitting for a long time. The main symptoms of plantar fasciitis may include heel pain, foot pain, stiffness, and tenderness. For the complications, ignoring plantar fasciitis may result in chronic heel pain that hinders your regular activities. Changing the way you walk as a way to relieve plantar fasciitis pain might lead to foot, knee, hip, or back problems. For better physiology, plantar fasciitis is the result of collagen degeneration of the plantar fascia at the calcaneal tuberosity of the heel as well as the surrounding peripheral structures. Chronic overuse can lead to micro tears in the origin of plantar fascia and repetitive trauma leads to recurrent inflammation and periostitis. Then, the body initially responds to the inflammation and cells called fibroblasts will make new collagen in an attempt to help with the injury. As the condition progresses over weeks to months, the inflammation diminishes and the collagen starts to unwind and unravel and then it breaks apart and becomes fragmented. At the same time, the collagen is unwinded and breaking apart Fibroblasts are enlarged in an attempt to make more and more collagen, but the unraveling out faces the new collagen formation. Many new blood vessels are made quickly in an attempt to provide more blood flow to the area, but these vessels are abnormal and immature and therefore are not very good at their job. The collagen that is created and added to the injured site is done so quickly and in a very disordered manner. The cell enlargement poor blood flow, all collagen unraveling and disorganized new collagen all contribute to the thickening of the plantar fascia and pain. To tell you have plantar fasciitis, doctor will diagnose based on your medical history and physical examination. During the exam, doctor will check for areas of tenderness in your foot. The location of your pain can help determine its cause. Doctor also will do palpation of the proximal plantar fascia incision, active and passive talocrural joint or reflection range of motion, tarsal tunnel syndrome test, twin last test, and longitudinal arch angle. If they think your patient may have torn or your pain is coming from another problem, they will do MRI that can pinpoint plantar tears or ruptures, tendon injury lesions, cysts and sometimes fractures or heel spurs. They also will do X-ray that can detect the presence of heel spurs. Management or treatment for plantar fasciitis. For conservative management, the first one is medications. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs will help with your pain and reduce inflammation of the plantar fascia. In therapies, physical therapists can show you a series of exercises to stretch the plantar fascia and Achilles tendon and to strengthen lower leg muscles. A therapist also might teach you to apply athletic taping to support the bottom of your foot. Night spins stretches your calf and the arch of your foot while you sleep. This holds the plantar fascia and Achilles tendon in a lengthened position overnight to promote stretching. Orthotics, your doctor might prescribe off the shelf or custom fitted arch supports to help distribute pressure to your feet more evenly. Lifestyle and home remedies. To reduce the pain of plantar fasciitis, try these self-care tips. 
first, maintain a healthy weight. Choose supportive shoes. Don't wear worn-out athletic shoes. Change your sport. Apply ice. And last one, stretch your arches. Other procedures. The first one is steroid injection. Injecting steroid medication into the tender area can provide temporary pain relief. Multiple shots are not recommended because they can weaken your plantar fascia and possibly cause it to rupture. Using ultrasound imaging, platelet rich plasma of different the patient's own blood can be injected to promote tissue healing. Extracorporeal shock wave therapy. In this procedure, some waves are directed at the area of heel pain to stimulate healing. It is usually used for chronic plantar fasciitis that has not responded to more conservative treatments. Ultrasonic tissue repair. It uses ultrasound imaging to guide a needle-like probe into the damaged plantar fascia tissue. Using ultrasound energy, the probe tips will vibrate rapidly to break up the damaged tissue, which is then suctioned out. In surgical procedure involving plantar fasciotomy can be accomplished in two ways. The first one is open surgery. A 1 to 2 inch incision will be made to expose your plantar fascia and detach it from your heel bone. Any trapped nerves or bone spurs can also be removed at this time. Second one is endoscopic surgery. It involves two small incisions under your ankle bone, each less than half an inch long. The surgeon will insert a small camera called an endoscope in one of the openings and a tiny knife in the other to release your plantar fascia. Even though plantar fasciitis can develop without an obvious cause, some factors can increase your risk of developing this condition. They include each, certain types of exercises, which are activities that place a lot of stress on your heel and attached tissue such as long distance running, ballet dancing and aerobic dance. Occupations that keep you on your feet such as factory workers, teachers and others who spend most of their work hours walking or standing on hard surfaces can damage the plantar fascia. And last one is obesity. The prognosis are most patients with plantar fasciitis eventually improve. Approximately 90% of cases are treated successfully with conservative care. In one long-term follow-up study, investigators found that 80% of patients treated conservatively for plantar fasciitis had complete resolution of pain after 4 years. For impairments and functional limitations, patients will have difficulties standing for a prolonged time, stiffness and tenderness on heels, tightened at calf muscles, difficulty to carry out leisure and play activity, also loss of dorsiflexion. That's all from us. Thank you.